You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 30th of August and I'm Roland from Milford. Jerome Powell opened the Jackson Hole Symposium last week, stating that substantial further progress has been met for inflation and that although there has been clear progress towards maximum employment, it's not where they want it to be and that the Delta variant poses new risks. They are focused on how the labour market evolves in the fall, with vaccinations rising, schools reopening, and enhanced unemployment benefits coming to an end. They believe there will no longer be any artificial factors holding back job seekers. It has been coined as a defiantly dovish speech by investors, as although he reinforced his desire to start winding back asset purchases this year, he highlighted this shouldn't be taken as a signal for interest rate hikes, implying we shouldn't expect higher rates anytime soon. The US dollar fell 0.4% against a basket of currencies post his comments. Biden's approval rating dipped below 50% for the first time in his presidential campaign. This does have implications for the midterm US elections to be held in late 2022, with both the House and the Senate majority up for grabs. Predictions at this stage suggest a loss of control to the Republicans for both chambers. This of course is very fluid and a lot can change between now and November next year. In key equity news, Australian reporting season is winding up, with only two more days for companies to report their full or half-year results. Like all reporting seasons, it has been very interesting. We've had a number of equity sell-downs, with insiders from Universal Stores, Corporate Travel Management, IDP Education, Zero, and NetWealth all selling equity. Retailers have seen tough trading conditions to start the financial year, with many carrying much more inventory than last year. This has raised some concerns, particularly for apparel retailers, around their potential inability to clear winter stock as we will likely be coming out of lockdown in much warmer conditions than when we entered it. Mergers and acquisitions are a big feature of today's markets, with capital activity likely to remain heightened as long as equity valuations stay high and debt remains very cheap. Asset valuations continue to boom, particularly for industrial properties, with key industrial landlords seeing property valuations increase anywhere from 13 to 30 percent. Looking to the week ahead, it's a relatively quiet one, with only two days of reporting season left and little economic data to be released. A couple things to look for is Australian GDP data, where the market expects 0.5% quarter-on-quarter growth or 9.2% year-on-year growth. The annual numbers are distorted by the week prior period, so I'd focus more on the quarterly numbers. In addition, the US non-farm payroll data is released on Friday, with expectations of a further 750,000 increase in new jobs slightly down on 943,000 added in July. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.